if you grew up in Malaysia, like I did, when you think of Pahang, you think of uh, maybe Cameron Highlands with all the tea plantations. So you think of Taman Negara, our national park. Um, but what about the food in Pahang though? Uh, let's find out with the help of some of my masters of Malaysian cuisine chefs. I hope you enjoy. This episode of Street Food Journeys features Zaleha Olpin making pulut panggang, Marco D, yours truly making nasi kabuli, Shaukani Abbas, Ken Abroad, Ikan Patin in Tamolo, and the MOMC and MOMC at Heart chefs answer the question What dish do you think of when you think of Pahang? So, berapa lama dah nuru dekat Bazar Ramadan? Dua uh, tahun. Dua tahun. Setelah tahun lepas lah. So, I kiranya I... ni macam nuru daripada awal memang meniaga kan? Uh-huh. Uh, tak ada kerja lain kan? Uh-huh. Maksudnya uh-huh. memang meniaga uh, punca rezeki nuru. Uh-huh. Okey. Saleha Olpin, also known as That Rendang Lady, is a Masters of Malaysian Cuisine chef and was born and raised in Pahang. She shows us how to make pulut panggang, Pahang style. All right, Saleha, uh, what are you making in this next segment? Ah, I'm making something really, really nice from my hometown, uh, Kuantan. Because the segment is for Pahang, I thought this is something that I really love to eat when I go home. Uh, they sell it on the street, obviously, in, uh, especially in the morning near my, like, near my mom's house. There's a huge field where we feed, we'll see a lot of stalls, a lot of little stalls. And this is one of my favorite one because this lady has been, uh, selling this for the last, like, 20 years, I think. She just stand there and she just make it fresh and bake it on this little satay, uh, burner, uh, with charcoals and everything. So it's called pulut panggang or basically we translate it as glutinous rice that you fill with some uh, fish floss, wrap it back into a log and you bake it on a barbecue. Okay, okay, yeah. Hmm. Well, um, let's uh, get the video going. But I had pulut panggang in my hometown in Seremban as well, but mm-hmm. we don't use fish. From memory, they use uh, dried shrimp, which was how yeah. I made it as well when I had my restaurant. But I- yes. I'm curious to see your version. Yeah, I think uh, the Kuantan and the Trangano version, because we are so close to Trangano, our food are so much influenced by Trangano as well. If you go to the other side, like Pekan, where the royal town is, then that food is more of pure Pahang. So it's like when you're at the border of Trangano, you get all the influence from Trangano. The pulut panga that I'm making is also made in uh, Kuala Trangano as well with, uh, it's a white fish floss. The one that you're saying, the one you're talking about, the one with prawns, are uh, actually what we call pulut udang. Okay. Did you use yes. fresh prawns or did you use dried prawns? A uh, dried prawns. That one's okay. dried prawns and coconut and coconut floss, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. That's how yeah. I made it. Yeah. Oh, so you call it pulut udang. Okay. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Cool. It's just it's just different states, I think. And I I remember Chef Joe was saying about some of them call it pulut leper as well. Isn't it? Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, I, didn't, yes. I didn't know that. Okay, yeah, in Tengano, they call it pulut lefa. But in Pahang, we call it either pulut panggang or pulut udang. And that's it. Okay, okay. I've never heard it called pulut udang. But let's let's get the video going. Okay, so, yeah. Um, yeah, just talk us through what you're doing and I'll just hit you with questions as we go. Yes, of course. So, the first thing you need to do is to cook the rice. So, I'm doing a simplified method here by just cooking them in the rice cooker. Traditional, some or older generations would steam the rice and then put the coconut milk in. But I just put everything to the rice cooker, some salt, a little bit of sugar, coconut milk, and um, a little bit of oil just to hold the rice nicely. Stir it and then put it on the rice setting, cook it. But the only thing is you still need to soak the rice for at least two hours, the glutinous rice, for at least two hours before you cook them. 
Okay. Do you use uh, cold water to soak it in or hot water? Yep. Just a simple cold water. Put it, soak okay. it in for two hours or longer if you like, but at least for two hours. And that's it. Cook the rice, set it aside, and you can start with your uh, the fish floss. Cool, cool. What sort of fish are you using here? The one I'm using here is called Baza Filet. Uh, the best, obviously, would be... Um, Spanish mackerel, or we call it ikan kembung in Malaysia, yeah. But you, I can't get it here, not all the time. So this is the one I'm using. And to be honest with you, these are like less, um, less fishy. So the family prefers a less fishy fish, less fishy fish. There you go. Um, so that's why I use baza filet. I just actually basically poached it in uh, salt and one tamarind skin for about like 10, 15 minutes until it's cooked through and then pound it in a uh, pestle and mortar. I just, like just, how using a mortar and pestle to pound it with because I, I, yeah. I never thought to do that. I would have just thrown it in the pestle. It's only half kilo of fish. If I do for my K3, it goes in uh, my mixer. <laughs> Trust uh, me. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. So once it's pounded, you know that the fish is actually cooked, but you you need now to just flavor the floss because at the moment it's just salt and a little bit of. Uh, you also need what else do you need? Um, you need sugar. You need salt. I'm just going. You're just going to see me adding in the coconut milk now. Um, so no desiccated coconuts in it. No, no desiccated coconut. That that is shallots that's gone in. Uh, Thinly sliced shallots, uh, julienne, ginger, a little bit of garlic if you prefer. If not, you can always opt it out. That is a fenugreek, um, sugar, one to two tablespoons. Um, salt goes in as well. And um, finally, add in coconut cream. You can always use coconut milk, no problem. I like coconut milk because I like, I prefer the more creamy um, uh, fish floss. Okay. So you will cook this on medium to low heat. It takes quite a while to stir because you have to keep stirring it. You don't want to burn it. Just sure. keep going, cook, stir and stir until it's slightly dry. It's like floss. You don't want it to be too dry. You want some moisture in it, but you don't want it watery. Okay. So you just keep, yeah, you just, you just keep stirring this. Sure. Was that pepper that you just added in or? Yes. Okay. I forgot to put the pepper just now, so I quickly add in the black pepper, but you should put it together with all the other ingredients just now. Sure. sure. So you see it's, going, it's, see it's drying nicely. Okay. It's not really dry. It's still wet. It's still heavy, but it's not too dry because too dry, your puruk panga will be like a little bit tasteless. Sure. So you set those aside and you actually soften the banana leaves. You can, there's two ways to soften the banana leaves. You could actually put it on the grill just now or you could uh, put it in hot water. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah. Now you've done the rice just now. Now I'm just uh, brushing some oil onto the banana leaves before okay. I add it in the rice. Yeah, so you just flatten the rice into how big is entirely up to you. You want it big. The one that the matchi sells to me is really massive. So I'm making probably, yeah, probably medium size. And this is the best bit. You can put as much uh, floss as you like. It doesn't matter. You can also put more rice on top to cover the floss. It's entirely up to you. How big, how much you want. That's the best thing about home cooked, homemade pulut panggang. Sometimes I'm, I'm when you really buy from the yeah, sometimes when you buy from the shop, you get very little fillings. You know, yeah. you just get really upset. So yeah, yeah, I'm surprised so, you said that the, the lady who sold it made it really big. Because in Malaysia, I always tell people, oh, everything in Malaysia is small. And uh -huh. This is really hers is really massive. She's selling for two two ringgit, one piece. It's it's big. Yeah, so okay. that's that's basically you fold it and nicely pack it in. Put the toothpicks on, yeah, fold it nicely and you just keep doing that. And then you put onto your grill. You could use barbecue, charcoal barbecue, that's the best. But I just, because of the demo, I just do it inside the house and yeah. I just use the grill. And you just brush some oil onto it. Yep, 
so so the, the it penetrates into the pulut panggang the longer you cook it the better i okay. prefer to be honest with you, i prefer it nice and soft but some people uh some like it crispy inside like really oh. nice and brown inside so it's also entirely up to you how you like your pulut panggang oh yeah this this is actually oh even looking at this i'm i want it again <laughs> I love this. This is actually my favorite, one of my favorite uh, morning kueh. And I go home, and yes. the first thing we do the next morning is like go buy breakfast or go for yes. roti canai. You know things like that. It's the yeah, things yeah. I miss most about Malaysia. Yeah, yeah, same here. The um, mm. now, but your banana leaves are they fresh banana leaves or are they frozen leaves? This one I bought specifically fresh ones because I know when I buy frozen one, I will always get the really a lot of care pairing in there so i bought a fresh one that cost wow. me about nine pounds for about <gasps> two long leaves yep oh my god <laughs> it's so expensive but you know what it's worth it now if you I don't have leaves like would you use something else for it you could wrap it in a uh, baking baking paper you could wrap it in, uh just oil the baking paper wrap it in the baking paper tuck it in tightly or and then wrap it again in the foil and put it on the barbecue that that works as well okay interesting interesting yeah, yeah. now you were saying earlier that like chef joe says that it's called leper did you say is it lepa l-e-p-a pulut lepa in tangani oh, okay. yeah only apparently okay. um yeah because you know what this reminds me it reminds me of the indonesian uh lemper ayam um they call it lemper, L-E-M-P-E-R. I wonder ah. if it's a word. But it's also sticky yeah. rice, but yeah. Oh, that looks oh wow. Good. I'm going to try and make, I've never thought to make it with fish before. So try it, a, try it. Yeah, if you, I mean, I know I'm a fan, I'm a big fan of uh, seafood. So I would do fresh prawns as well, but this is the traditional for Kuantan and Trungganu. Um, uh, it's a white uh, sambal, white uh, fish floss. If the mm -hmm. prawns, I think they will put a uh, cheese in there, so it, it's slightly red, okay, red okay. filling. Yeah. Okay. So this one has no chili at all, no, 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 no. spice. Okay. No. So the heat comes from the black pepper. You want it? Yeah. You want it? Uh, yeah. You want it hotter? You add more pounded black pepper. Oh, fantastic. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much for this, uh, Zaleha. I'm gonna try no it. No problem. You know. Okay. Thank I'll you. Bye. I'll see you later. Uh, See you, bye bye. Yeah. Marco D is an Englishman based in Malaysia. He is a TikTok and YouTube star and a TV presenter. He went on a food hunt in Pahang. So I'm here now on the outskirts of Kuantan. We're by the highway. We've stopped off here. We've had so much food, but we are here now at Kurabop Lakor. Oh, Fatima! Oh, I love Satong, Sai Suga Satong. This one looks awesome. I'm trying it right now. Oh my god. Flour on that really, really prawn goreng. Prawn goreng, 10 out of 10. We are here for the Karapop liqueur. Oh, Vatima, time to try your Karapop liqueur. Very fishy this one. Usually the caribou liqueur is very doughy. It's good. Oh, Fatima! Your caribou liqueur, Sangasadapla! Very nice. You need another uh, staff here? Uh, I be your staff. I, I come and cook for you. Yeah, my new job. Thank you. Peace. So we are in Guantan and apparently everything here is royal. This royal pudding, pecan royal pudding, special delicacy. Okay, why is it royal pudding? Because it's meant for the king. So at the bottom, we have banana. It's called lemak manis. This we have the yellow. It's actually egg yolk. We have prunes. Mm -hmm. some prunes and also have some cashew nuts. Um, is this going on top? Yeah. Is drink or no, no. It's just pudding. It's a gravy. It's like custard, like yes, English like custard. custard. Yes, it's like English custard. That looks really good. That smells so good. Just to let you know guys, only kings can have a stint. So. <laughs> right, here we go. Wow. 
That's Malaysian dessert, so I'd actually like it. Because <laughs> everything is sweet. It tastes like bananas and custard. Bread and butter pudding, maybe? Yeah, bread and butter it pudding. It tastes like that. It tastes like everything in Kuantan. Le Mak Manis is the thing you have to try. This is one of the best things I've tried all trip. Yeah. Royal pudding. Yeah. Try it. My Masters of Malaysian Cuisine co-founder Paul Gray joins me to talk about Nasi Kabuli. Um, so Paul, Nasi Kabuli, I've never heard of it. I had to Google it. Um, and according to Zaleha, who is from Pahang, it was actually a dish that was invented for the Sultan, for royalty. I did not expect it. It, it seems pretty <laughs> simple enough, you know, so I'm excited to see how it goes. Yeah. Let's have a look. I've never seen it. So just like you've never seen it, so neither have I. <laughs> okay, so I'm just adding like these uh, onions and actually the recipe did not call for garlic, but I like garlic, so I threw some garlic in. Um, and garlic gin garlic. Yeah, I know, right? So I'm using a big onion, but in Malaysia, they would have used like a combination of big onions and small shallots. And I'm adding some lemongrass here as well. The lemongrass I use is like frozen and already minced up. So I just kind of like guesstimated how much to put in. Um, I talk about how spot that is. <laughs> I know it doesn't look very attractive, <laughs> um, but it's a shortcut from my business days. And I'm just adding some pepper in there. But uh, the interesting thing about this dish is that it uses coriander. Like, so I'm just pounding some coriander seeds in the mortar and pestle. And then I'm going to add them to the food processor slash bread blender as well. Um, and other ingredients that would go in would be turmeric. But I'm using turmeric powder, which is why I'm not adding it here. But you could use fresh turmeric as well. And also galangal. You could use fresh galangal. But again, shortcut, I'm using powdered galangal because it's already in powder form. It doesn't go in the food processor. But if you were using the, you know, the fresh versions, you would actually blend it along with all the other spices. And now I'm just uh, transferring it into a pan to fry it up, uh, just like with a lot of Malaysian cooking. So I'm just adding the turmeric here. A lot with a lot of Malaysian cooking, you would fry, and that's the galangal powder. You would actually. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just uh, frying it up, and usually with Malaysian recipes, you fry up this spice paste that you call rempa in oil okay but i like to actually I, I i've added the oil now i think that was uh, yeah that didn't show up but i actually would have um i i i actually dry fry it first to remove some of the moisture before i add the oil in so it doesn't spit as much uh, that's just a jackie m hack okay <laughs> and after frying the spices I then add the, these are what we call here in Australia, chicken Maryland pieces. So it's the thigh plus the drumstick attached together. Mm, weird Australians. <laughs> what do you call it? Uh, quarter, I think. Basically. Quarter. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> quarter could be the top quarter, you see? Okay, so I'm just putting in some salt. And also, being Jackie, I'm, I'm, I'm going to add some chicken powder to it as well, okay? But the original recipe did not call for chicken powder. Um, so, like I said, my caveat is I do not know this dish. And I had to Google it, and this was the recipe I came up with, okay? But it seems pretty straightforward, so I'm just going with it. Yeah, nothing seems really tricky so far. And, um, yeah, it looks simple, but very flavorful by the looks of it. Yeah, there are uh, another uh, a separate recipe that actually, I mean, there are always like variations in different, from different sources. And this is basmati rice. I'm just going to actually, you know, typically you would rinse it and then like strain it. But because I'm not near a sink at the moment, I just basically pour water over it and then I'll just uh, strain it later on. But the idea is to get your rice wet. But um, yeah, so with this, we're just going to cook it till the chicken is done. Um, and because they're chicken Maryland pieces, they can take a little while to cook, okay? So you're looking at at least 20 minutes, 25 minutes or something like that. You want to cook it all the way through. Um, as I was saying earlier, there are other recipes out there that actually tell you to marinate the chicken with 
salt and um, the turmeric first you know for a few uh, hours before you cook it i mean i don't see the point in it but so i skip <laughs> because it's all going to be going in there and being boiled anyway right mm -hmm. so once it's cooked you then take it out and you want to dry it okay now um typically if you were in a rush uh, if you weren't in a rush you would actually let it sit in the marinade you know for a while so that it soaks up more of the flavors mm -hmm. but I, I did it straight away and it actually turned out fine, right? So that's the leftover marinade and you don't waste it, okay? But anyway, I, I, I forgot to mention, after I fried the spice paste, I took a little bit of it out, which I'm just adding back to the pan now. Um, and that's going to be for the rice. So we're going to be using the same spice mixture and we're just going to um, fry up the rice with it, just to, the raw rice, just to make it aromatic. It, this recipe, this technique actually reminds me a little bit of Hainanese chicken rice because I used to sell Hainanese chicken rice at my restaurant where we basically do the same thing. We would like do a, a I mean, different set of ingredients, um, but we would actually fry up the rice with oil and with um, the spices and then we would then cook the rice in the rice cooker, right? So, except, again, we weren't using basmati, we were using jasmine rice, but the, the idea is the same. Okay. This is, yeah, it's almost very uh, Indian. I mean, I don't know in India, India, but I know with a lot of the Indian population in South Africa, is that we have dishes where they do that to the rice. Sure, yeah, yeah. And um, with basmati rice, it takes, I'm just using some of the stock from the, you know, the what was used to poach the chicken to, uh, cook the rice with and it wasn't what the recipe said but I figured like you know why use water Wait. when you use flavor <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, wow, and, perfect. <laughs> yeah the result was that my rice looks a bit more yellow than what I saw <laughs> on my <laughs> so I just heated up some oil here and then you're gonna fry the chicken up a second time right uh, at this point, you want the chicken to be. I actually had, had dried it with some paper towel. Yeah, and yeah, also so that it doesn't spit all over in the oil. But remember, the chicken is going to hundred percent cooked too by simmering it in the water. So this should not take too long. Okay, you just want to cook up the, the the chicken. Um, and the rice is done. I just used the rice cooker and just cooked it up and fluffed it up. Basmati rice takes more water, so when you steam it, uh, when you when you cook it, you want more water um, to yeah. cook it. Yeah. So just presenting it here. What would have gone well with this? Uh, like Zaleha recommended that you could serve this with a tomato sambal, right? So like a chili condiment that has some tomato, like you know, tomato in it as well. And um, I actually ate this with a blachan, sambal blachan. Um, <laughs> it's not. It makes sense. Yeah. It sounds like it would work well. I asked Saleha, like, does this actually come with, like, um, you know, something? You know, she says no, because typically when they serve it in Bahang, they would serve this with other dishes as well that do have sauce, like maybe a curry or something like that. So the curry sauce would be then, you know, used over the rice. But as, is, mm, as yeah. it stands, it's just like that. So just the fried chicken, crispy, you know, fried chicken, uh, mm. the rice, and some, I just garnished it with some cucumber. And also remember the water, the stock that was used to poach the chicken with. Um, mm -hmm. It was uh, quite, uh, I guess, a little bit salty because it was reduced, right? I basically cooked it up again by adding more water to it and then turn it into a broth to serve the chicken with. So that worked out really well. I'm just sprinkling it with a spring onion here. So Yeah, it's a good looking dish and it's got sort of those Indian vibes. So it looks really good to me. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's pretty simple. I don't generally actually like to cook chicken Maryland in such a big piece like this because you know they're hard to cook all the way through. Um, so you just want a little bit of patience to make sure that it's, you know, it's simmered properly and you would want a bit of patience to let it like drain on a draining rack or if you rush it through like I did, I patted it dry with paper towels and then I fried it up sort of thing. So there's just a couple of steps, 
But as far as uh, yeah, the ingredients that go into it, pretty straightforward. Um, so give it a yeah, go. Yeah, I like it. I'm definitely going to try it. <laughs> Good, because the ingredients are, are pretty universally available. I think nothing too exotic, right? Cool. Okay. Well, make sure you try Thanks it. Thanks a lot. Know. Yeah, we'll do. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
Okay, cool. <laughs> well, I'm definitely going to Taman Negara and I might check out the tea plantations in Cameron Highlands as well. Well, thank you so much for this, Shalkani. Always very informative. I love talking to you about all these beautiful <laughs> Thank <people>. you very much. <laughs> all right. I'll see you next Bye -bye. time. Ken Abroad is from Germany. He's a full-time traveller around Southeast Asia. He visited Pahang not so long ago. It is time to try one of the most popular foods here in Malaysia, satay. All right, I was just told that they actually cook the satay outside. So let's have a look how, how they prepare it actually, because I think that's interesting. Hi, hello. hello. Ah, over there. Ah, okay, let's uh, have a look. Ah, I would like to, to see how you make it. Yeah. So we have the fresh ones here, yeah, already finished here, right? Ah, yes. Which uh, which uh, type is this? Is it chicken? Beef, beef, beef. 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 Ah, that's yeah, a beef chicken one. Ah. Chicken over there. Ah, it smells already. It's fresh, like fresh barbecue around here. That's really cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a really popular um, uh, street food meal as well in Malaysia. Normally you can get one piece for about one winget, so that's like 20 cents, sometimes even less. <laughs> Okay, and uh, how many uh, how many minutes you need to put them here? Uh, ten minutes. Ten minutes only, and then easy. Ten minutes. Oh. Okay, I'm excited to try it. This is the mutton. The mutton, okay. Yeah. For the red tip, this is the rabbit. The rabbit. And the, this is the stomach. The, the stomach. Stomach. Uh, okay. Okay. This is the liver. Liver. Chicken and beef. Chicken and beef. Yeah. Okay, the food has arrived. Yeah, it looks really nice. I'm a little bit scared of the liver because I'm not sure if I'm gonna like that. But okay. So and um, yeah, we also have a, a jug of, of sauce here. So some sauce and as a side dish, I have this. So some uh, some cucumbers and onions and some uh, rice cake. So I'm excited. Let's go. Okay, I think we're going to start simple with, with the beef. Because I'm pretty sure I like the beef and the chicken one. So, um, I don't know, do you just um, dip it in here normally? I will just try it raw before, uh, for, uh, before I dip it into the sauce. Mm, oh wow. Mm, really good. Let me adjust the camera a little bit. Mm, okay. So, yeah, it's like a barbecue grilled beef. Mm, really good. I had the opportunity to visit Tamorlo in Pahang, which is famous for its catfish. Being in the tropics, Malaysia is full of waterways, and in the middle of the country is the riverside town of Tamorlo. It's a pretty spot and home to a Malaysian delicacy I was keen to try. But first, I wanted to see where it came from. I think I can hear the fish already. Be careful. Oh, okay, okay. Here we go. So, I've made my way to Tamolo, which is inland from Kuala Lumpur. Now, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> the, now, Tamolo is actually at the junction of two rivers, the Pahang River and the Samantan River. I'm told that Tamolo is actually referred to as Bandar Ikan Patin, which means a patin fish town. Patin fish apparently is a kind of local catfish that's caught in the rivers over here. So I'm going to do what a lot of people in the past have done, that is uh, travel all the way to Tamolo to actually try the fish here. And I've got a local chef here. Eddie to help me out with that. Eddie, tell me about this fish farm. This is where you get your fish for yes, your yes, restaurant? Yes, yes. How big do they grow to? Uh, one and a half or two kilos. One and a half and two uh, kilos. Okay. Now, I know that you can catch the fish in the river, but mm. why are they farming it here? Uh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. And because it's more expensive, basically, I think, you know, just over the years, the, uh, you know, catching this fish is just getting a little bit tricky and it's a lot more expensive. Obviously, catching it in the wild, you know, it actually tastes a lot better, but also to make it uh, sustainable and affordable, they've started farming this fish so we can still enjoy a delicious uh, ikan batin meal uh, just from this farm fish as well. 
I see some fish pellets over here. You think we can feed them? Yes, yes, sure. sure oh, sure. great, great, great. This is exciting. Here we come. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at them. Wow. I don't want to fall in, but I'm very intrigued by this fish. <laughs> Catfish are normally a bottom feeder and their flesh can taste quite muddy. But these are farms, so their diet can be controlled to ensure a sweeter flavour. It's also a far more environmentally friendly way to source the fish. Operations like this have allowed the wild populations of Patin to come back to more healthy numbers. It has also allowed the supply to be more reliable. Now, as much as I was enjoying the tour of the farm, I was here to taste this famous delicacy. So we headed to Eddie's restaurant just up the hill. <laughs> but I'm very hungry as well. So this is the famous ikan patin, yes, right? Yes, okay. Yes. Can you tell me how you're gonna cook this? Okay, this is the onion, the onion, the onion, the onion. Okay, okay. okay. so you how to cook it? Okay, let's put this one. So what he's going to do is that we've got just some pretty basic ingredients. We've got some pureed ginger over here, the shallots, this is soy sauce, and this is just Oh, rice wine. <laughs> That's definitely rice wine. So Eddie's just smeared some of this over. And Li Lo Jing Sin having that. Yeah. So he's just gonna steam this and then we're gonna add this at the end, right? Okay, let's go. Okay. So here's the steamer. How long do you steam this for? Uh, eight minutes. Eight minutes. Not long at all. Which is great because I'm hungry. Okay, and just cover this. So eight minutes is just enough time for us to go and grab a drink. So we'll come back. In front of the restaurant, there are pools being used as fish tanks to keep the patin as fresh as possible prior to cooking. I won't lie to you, they're not exactly a pretty critter. Okay, let's go, Eddie. Let's see what this looks like. Right? Oh, this is making me so hungry. What are you doing there? You're just mixing the wine with the soy sauce. Okay. Fantastic. It's ready to eat now? Yes. Okay, yes. great. You're gonna put some shallots on. I'm going to try this very quickly because I'm really, really hungry here. Let's play that. Oh my goodness, this is fantastic. Now, I'm told by the locals here that the Malays actually do this a little bit different. They use tempoya, which is what's uh, fermented durian apparently, but the Chinese like to keep it quite simple. I'm talking with my mouth full here. <laughs> but they just steam it with some ginger and shallots, but you have to try it. It sounds very easy and it tastes absolutely fantastic. Eddie, I'm gonna eat some more of this. Okay. Oh my goodness. Mm. Our chefs from Masters of Malaysian Cuisine and MOMC at Heart answer the question, what dishes do you think of when you think of Pahang? Uh, when we think, when I think about Pahang, I'm from Pahang, obviously. When I think about Pahang, it's got to be Opo Daging. That is one of my absolute favorite when I go home. There's a special place somewhere in um, Kuantan that sells this as well. Uh, we do that, but it's a lot of work. It's very, very similar to uh, rendang. Um, like Negeri Sembilan, they have rendang hijau, you got perak, you got rendang to, and then Kelantan, you have keruto. So, Pahang exclusive is opor daging. Very, very nice. And uh, obviously, rendang uh, was brought into Malaysia by the migrants uh, from Indonesia. And the difference is the rendang, the Indonesian rendang is very, very dry. Uh, our opor has lots of gravy on it and it's really dark. And delicious. Hi guys, uh, when I think of Pahang, I always think about tempoya patin. Definitely, it's going to be very, very nice, uh, delicious uh, food, especially from the durian. You know, when you cook with this uh, uh, ikan patin from Temelu. Very nice. Uh, in Pahang, because Pahang is very famous uh, with it durian, like musangking and so on. So they are quite few numbers of dishes are inspired from the uh, delicious durian. Uh, for example, let's say they have a gulai tempoya ikan patin uh, that you have to try. If you are in Kuantan, uh, you can go to some good pastry where they offer this uh, all made from 
durian and they have uh, durian crab, uh, durian uh, pastries, durian bomb they call it, or durian tat. Or if you are somewhere in Jiranto, Rao, or in Kuala Lipis, um, very nice scenery down here. You, you can always go for, uh, they call it gulai asam rong. This asam rong actually is made from the processed uh, rubber tree um, fruits. The other one is uh, if you go to the coast area, you can only look for ikan bakap thai. Beautiful fish with a good, nice, uh, we call it a stinky bean. Of course, for the sweet, uh, very famous in uh, Pahang is pudding diraja. You got to try all of this. If I go to, if I think of uh, food in Pahang, okay, so of course there's so many uh, variety of uh, hawker's food in Pahang or, or a street food in Pahang, but aha, this is rather rare, but uh, if you're lucky enough, you can find Laksa Pahang. Laksa Pahang is very, very nice. Okay, you probably, some of you might think that, ah, Pahang ada laksa. Of course, Pahang ada laksa. I know each episode seems to get longer and longer. But even with that, we've got even more content for you, which you can access via our membership area. So make sure you sign up at malaysianchefs.com slash street food journeys. And we'll send you details on how to get to them once we've got everything all set up. And I'll see you back here next week for another episode. And this time we are covering Pera. Have a great week ahead. I'm Jackie M.